short-lived transient species. You can think of hyperspectral imaging with good time resolution, all kinds of intriguing things. So one way to think of this also is to think in terms of interferences. I have two frequency combs of slightly different line spacing and I look with my photo detector at beat nodes, beat nodes between pairs of comb lines. I get a radio frequency comb and in essence I map my optical spectrum into a radio frequency spectrum. Uh, so, so far we assume that both combs are sent through the sample, which might actually be undesirable because then I cannot be sure which of the comb lines has been, abs uh, has been abs uh, absorbed. So, but we can easily uh, use my se the second comb just as a local oscillator for, to record this multiplexed heterodyne signal. Then only a single frequency comb has to be sent through the sample. And if I do that, it's possible to put the sample into a cavity, to have a resonant cavity that's resonant with each and every comb line. And so I, in, in effect, uh, enhance the sensitivity by a potentially large factor. And we did such an experiment. Here is a cavity that was actually built up for a different purpose. It was built up, it was constructed as a build up cavity for femtosecond pulses to have a very high circulating power femtosecond pulse to produce frequency combs in the extreme ultraviolet. But since this was available, we also tried to see what, what can you do with this cavity enhanced Fourier spectroscopy. Here in the picture, it's working in the green. Uh, for the experiment, we used an ytterbium fiber laser near one micron. And there's, for instance, ammonia that you can look at. Ammonia has some very weak uh, vibrational overtones that actually had not been studied in high resolution before. And here is an example of a spectrum. Again, a single shot measurement, uh, 18 microseconds recording time. And you get a fairly well-resolved complex spectrum in such a short time. So this kind of dual comb spectroscopy gives you acquisition times at the limit, extreme sensitivity. You can either have low resolution, say if you want to look at liquids, uh, but also extreme resolution. You can resolve the individual comb lines. You can get extreme accuracies because we know the absolute frequency of each comb line. You can look at both absorption and dispersion. And of course, with these new fangled miniaturized frequency comb generators, uh, probably one can develop rather compact instruments and when they can, one can extend these techniques to new spectral regions from the terahertz to the vacuum ultraviolet. Uh, let me conclude with one other application that is uh, fascinating astronomers. There are new astronomical observatories on the drawing board with huge mirrors with very big light gathering capability and they make it feasible to think about precision astronomy. Uh, for instance, you can look at tiny Doppler shifts uh, in the light of stars uh, because the star wobbles as, it, as a planet goes around. You can think of new tests of general relativity also look for astronomical evidence for changing constants or look at primordial nucleosynthesis. But how, how to get sufficient spectral accuracy? And that's where frequency combs look intriguing. And just for proof of principle, we uh, went, uh, a team from our lab, went to a vacuum tower telescope on the island of Tenerife, which has which is a solar observatory, but it has a highly resolving spectrograph. And so to create calibration lines, you take a frequency comb. Unfortunately, the comb spacing, say, of 250 megahertz that you get from a fiber laser is too fine to be resolved by this astronomical spectrograph, even though it's highly resolving. So one needs to thin out the comb spectrum, which one can do uh, with a filter, Fabi Pro, cavity so that uh, you end up with an effective 
home spacing of maybe 10 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz. And, and this light you can feed with a fiber into the spectrograph together with the sunlight. Here is our little team, Thilo Steinmetz and Constanza or your Hauk, uh, adjusting some optical components of this comb generator. And here are some solar spectra with Fraunhofer lines and superimpose this regular comb, uh, this regular astro comb. And uh, so we thought this is really just a proof of principle. Nobody will be interested in getting better calibration of solar spectra. But as soon as this paper has been published, we got phone calls from groups who said, we are doing th uh, three-dimensional modeling of the solar atmosphere, and we cannot find well-resolved spectra. Can we use your data? And, and so now the, uh, uh, the solar telescope is actually buying a frequency comb from our spin-off company. Uh, on, uh, in, in Chile, uh, there is a special observatory uh, equipped to hunt for planets in distant solar systems. It's the HARPS spectrograph at a 3.6 meter telescope of the European Southern Observatory at La Silla. And in October 2009, there was some headline in CNN that 32 new planets had been discovered outside the solar system using this instrument. So they, this is this working with the principle that if a star has a planet, both orbit around a common center of gravity, so the star also orbits. And as a result, you see some small periodic Doppler shifts of the <coughs> spectral lines. But all the planets discovered in with this instrument so far have been big Jupiter-like gas planets and one would need considerably higher sensitivity to look at small Earth-like planets uh, to just have some estimate. Our own Sun uh, will wobble at a speed of something like 10 centimeters per second so we need to be able to observe Doppler shifts of that magnitude. And so uh, we've been working with this observatory to implement an astrocomb based on a fiber laser, a terbium fiber laser, which one can thin out again with a series of fabri filters. But you can frequency double this light to uh, have cr a comb in the visible, because the half sp uh, spectrometer works in the visible spectral region. You can broaden this uh, comb in a nonlinear fiber, and in the end, you can even the intensities of the lines with some s uh, special filter that then gives you a good, nice calibration spectrum. And from January of this year, here are some examples of data, uh, 32 shell orders of the spectrograph, not all of them yet, have been filled with nice, evenly spaced comb lines. And after uncovering some bugs in the calibration software and solving some other uh, small problems, uh, it was possible to demonstrate a photo noise limited sensitivity of 10 centimeters per second. So that's just barely enough to see Earth-like stars, but I think there is room for improvement here. Uh, another thing that one could do uh, in astronomy is to look at intergalactic hydrogen gas clouds. We know that the space between galaxies is filled by hydrogen gas. How, how do we know? Well, we can look at the light emitted by distant quasars, and we see an absorption spectrum. You get a whole forest of lines, the so-called Lyman alpha forest, because they are all the same line, the Lyman alpha line of atomic hydrogen, but shifted by different redshift amounts because these hydrogen clouds have different distances from the Earth. Now, if it is true, what cosmologists tell us that our universe continues to expand at an accelerating rate, then these cosmic redshifts should change with time. And if you could have a sensitivity of one centimeter per second, then 
uh, we might be able to detect this continuing expansion of space over a time period of 10 years or so. So uh, these are intriguing challenges and questions. Are these cosmic redshifts changing with time? Do we have evidence for the speculative continuing expansion of the universe? Can we learn something about intergalactic gas clouds? So these are just a few of the new uh, problems that we can tackle using frequency combs. And let me conclude with some word from Charlie Towns, the uh, co-inventor of the laser, who in his book, How the Laser Happened, argues that there is much that we don't understand, and in many cases we don't understand that we don't. And the really surprising discoveries will probably depend primarily on individuals, not teams or committees, even though the individual may be part of a team. So with this praise for curiosity-driven research, I have reached the end, and I thank you for your attention. Would you agree to answer some questions? So let me thank Professor Hench for the wonderful lecture. And he is willing to entertain two or three questions. So anyone who has a question, please stand up, speak clearly and loudly, and yeah. ask your question. Uh, could you tell me whether you think there are any practical applications of the frequency code towards hyperspectral further observation, medical observation, spread spectrum indications? Yeah, I can only speculate. But, uh, I mean, this, this may... Fast... Oh, yeah. This... Uh, so repeat the question. Yeah, Can okay. Yeah. So practical application. Can, can one think of practical ap application? And of course, it's early in the game. Uh, practical applications will also depend on having practical comb generators. But if you could integrate a comb generator on a chip and sell it for a few dollars, uh, I think there will be practical application. And for instance, in the context of biophotonics, you, you could uh, probably uh, do very rapid spectroscopic microscopy of living cells, uh, maybe discriminate proteins that you don't have to label by taking advantage of nonlinear effects that you can use. And we are actually vaguely thinking of exploring some steps in that direction, but of course we are not experts. And, uh, another practical application might be in telecommunications. If I want to send more data over existing fiber line, uh, then a comb generator could allow me uh, to uh, define the frequencies very precisely, the channels very precisely, and maybe I can increase uh, the rate of data. And I might have such a comb generator in my television set to receive three-dimensional holographic movies. <laughs> so maybe things like that can be imagined. Another question? If not, let's thank again Professor Hans. <laughs>